little bit. Oh, just a touch there. Better. Scoot it up. Oh, there we go. How's it going? Scoot this down so you don't have to see all, all my insulation up there. Well, you can see a little bit of it. <laughs> check, check. All right. Uh, hey, Duck Fan. How's it going? Not a lot of uh, Pentax news going around right now. Um, so Canon had their R7 and R10 announced, which was kind of funny because uh, it kind of uh, made me look back at my Canon days and and everybody hates this release of, of the Canon stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of where, where I, why I got out of Canon and, and um and looked around at other systems and that's when I found Pentax and uh, I've been stuck ever since. So, uh, it's great. Uh oh, you just picked up the HD 28 to 105 for $214. That's a steal. And I have not used that lens. So it's not going to be on this list here of my top 10, uh, Pentax lenses of all time. This list is going to just be from stuff I've used. Uh, if you've watched my channel, I've used quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of the the Pentax lenses out there. I hadn't used them all, but uh, there I will put some at the end of this list that I hadn't used. Uh, I did I did my top ten or top fifteen actually Pentax lenses. Uh, probably about three years ago. And I, I did, I did a video and I, I did number five. It was really annoying. I was going to do an echo effect and try to make it really good. I'll leave a link to that. Well, not uh, after this video in the description below. So you could check it out uh, if you want to. Uh, and my, and I went and since there has in the last three years, you don't realize how many lenses has Pentax actually, uh, released since then if you go back and look you're like wow okay they they actually are releasing stuff for you so um if you're pentax users they are releasing stuff so um there'll be some of those lenses in this list and uh i guess we should just go ahead and get started into it uh thanks everybody for watching uh leave a comment or if you're in the chat uh just tell me what you think about these lenses that I have selected in my personal top 10 lenses by Pentax of all time. And I'm going to tell you how I'm going to, how I came up with this. It's kind of similar to the last video. Um, basically the IQ, the uh, performance and cost um, performance being how it's, how it holds in my hand and, and the basic features of the lens, the build construction, all that. So those are the, the three things that make me put these in the list. And even though a lens is more expensive, doesn't mean it's going to be on the top end of this list. So, uh, and leave, leave a, maybe a comment below or whatever, what your top three lenses of are of all time that, that you've used on the Pentax system. Got my little notes here. <laughs> All right, we'll start at uh, number 10. Um, and I've got some of these lenses in front of me that I'll just show off briefly. And then some of these I don't actually have anymore, but uh, they are great lenses. Uh, and that's one that I'm going to start out with. Uh, number 10 is the uh, 50 to 135, the DA star lens. Uh, great, great lens. Um, if you're, if you're doing a wedding photography or anything like that, even if you're just doing some regular uh, portraits or even some like uh, closer up wildlife stuff. This is a fantastic lens. It's a, you know, it's 75 to, you know, the, the, the 200 range. So it's the classic, uh, classic lens and it's F 2.8 throughout. Um, really nice lens and it doesn't weigh too much. This is for, uh, I should say crop sensor cameras, but I'm going to have both in here. I'm going to have uh, lenses that are optimized for crop sensors, and there's going to be some full full frame lenses as well uh, there. 
So, um, so great, great lens. Um, I, I hadn't looked at comps on how much it sells for nowadays, but it's been, it's been out for a while. You could probably pick it up pretty, pretty cheap and it does perform really well. It has that, uh, SDM motor on it, so it, it, it's uh, rather quiet as well. All right, uh, let's go with the next one. The next one would be a macro lens. Um, there's a couple of macro lenses on this. Uh, and and this, this list actually differs from my one from three years ago quite a bit. So uh, this is the 90 millimeter Tamron lens. So it's not a Pentax lens, but I actually prefer this over the, the, the Pentax 100 millimeter f8 macro lens uh why i mean they're both super sharp they're both great lenses uh this macro uh can be had for around 250 i think the the pentax 100 uh if you get it used it's, it's a little bit more than that but this is not weather sealed uh, but the focus ring is really big it has a limiter on it it's super sharp um it fits the the k1 a lot better than the 100 millimeter um, macro from Pentax because that one's super tiny. It has a, that one has a 49 millimeter filter thread, I think. And it just, it doesn't feel bright on the camera just because it's so small. I just prefer this a macro, uh, a lot. So, uh, I would recommend that if you're looking for a macro lens, that, that is my all time favorite. I've had that lens like several, several, several times. Uh, number eight is the, uh, and I've got this lens. Oh, oh well, I guess I sh should show you. This is the this is the 90 millimeter macro lens right there. There you go. Of course, Eddie's gonna like put the holy trinity up, up there, right? <laughs> I hadn't tried the 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 77 FA limited, so I'm not gonna. That's not gonna be on my list. Um, but here we go. Here, here's the here's. I don't have the uh, 100 millimeter. Pentax version to show you, but the, look at, let me grab a camera. Let me grab, hold on. There we go. So this just, if you, if you have the 100 millimeter Pentax version, look, this just fits the camera so much better. It's not all back weighted because you've got this lens right here and the, the, the focus ring is a lot better. With macro photography, you're going to be using a lot of uh, manual focus, at least I do, and I think the majority of people that shoot ma ma macros do. So um, this is just a, a better lens in that aspect, even though it's not weather resistant, but I don't like to go shoot out in the rain. I get caught in it sometimes, but hey, there you go. Oh, uh, that was number nine and now we'll go on to uh number eight and i've got that lens in front of me like i said some of these i won't will not have in front of me but we're going to put this on you know what it is oh you see it <laughs> you probably know what it is i'll put it on the, the k1 here because these last two lenses are made for full frame uh cameras so th this is on the k1 this is the uh 24 F a star F two lens. This thing is spectacular. Um, I, I thought about buying, um, that 21 millimeter that they just released. That's why it's not in the, on this list. Cause I hadn't used it, but then I thought about it. It's, it, it's rather expensive. And I, I bought this lens. I think it was around $400 and, um, I have no complaints about this lens. I don't know why I would buy that 21 when I thought about it a little bit more. Um, and the, the price was, uh, oh, I think it was $1,200 or something like that, maybe a little bit more. And, um, I'm like, eh, am I going to see that much difference? I mean, I know this, this is a little less, uh, wide angle, but this thing is spectacular. I strongly recommend it, um, for around that $400 price tag. If you're doing anything landscapey, fantastic. And it's F2, if you want to try some, uh, you know, some astrophotography with it as well. I think you'll be very happy with it. I don't do a lot of uh, astrophotography, but I know this will perform really well. So, And that was number eight on my list of top 10. And now we're going to go with a lens I do not have. 
which uh, I do strongly recommend. And it's another macro lens and it is for um, uh, optimized for crop sensor cameras like the K3. And that would be, that would be uh, the 35 millimeter limited macro lens f2.8. And that thing is fantastic. I was really surprised. I mean, if you look, read the reviews or look at the reviews on that thing, it's just a really, really stellar lens. I guess I should say on all these lenses, I think I have reviews on all these on my channel. So go ahead and check those out. You can just uh, click on Lee Hayes one or whatever, and then just uh, uh, search whatever lens you're looking for and it'll be in there. But that, that lens is fantastic. Um, 35 millimeter macro, eh, you know, um, I like something a little bit more telephoto, but man, that thing is super sharp and you have that macro feature if you need it to get up there really, really close and, um, really, really stellar lens. Strongly recommend that one. And, uh, I think the cost on it is used. I think it's around, it's under $300. So, uh, you really, really should get that, that lens. Um, especially with the K3 Mark III, man, he'll be very happy with that. And uh, this one's for Eddie. <laughs> I got your I got your 40, 43 Limited right here. Look at that. And even though I did say that the um, that 100 millimeter macro lens was, this is number five, by the way, was like too lightweight and, uh, you know, for for the camera, this, this is like that. But if you're looking for something like, just walking around or anything. This would be fantastic. Um, I really enjoy this. This outperforms, I, I know they're different focal lengths, but this really, really outperforms the 31 millimeter uh, limited in my opinion. I had them both and I was using these and uh, I just kept on going, you know, I'm gonna use the, the 43, I'm just gonna, you know, <laughs> you know, widen it out, step a little bit back or whatever, and uh, use this lens. It's a stellar, stellar lens. Um, so 43, and I think you could get this for around 400 bucks too. And this is, uh, it's FA, so it's optimized for full frame, but you can opt, you can use it on, uh, you know, crop sensor cameras, but it, it really shines on full frame uh, cameras. So 43 limited, go out there and get this. Um, and, and since I said the 43, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have any 50 millimeters on this. I know that's probably going to disappoint some people, but there are so many 50 millimeters out there and there's a, a few that I hadn't tried, but um, this is slightly wider and I, I, I prefer like on full frame more the 35 millimeter uh, focal length than the 50 millimeter focal length. That's just my opinion. I like it a little bit wider and I actually use 35, believe it or not, I don't do portraits all that often, but I like the 35 millimeter uh, look for some portraits. Yeah, it's a little bit wider and you, yeah, but I, I've shot some portraits with a lens coming up that I'll, that uh, I really, really recommend. And, and I'll uh, talk about that in a second. Okay. That uh, this 43 was number five on my list. Uh, now we're going to go to number four. I'm, I'm like going through this really quick, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, number four on, on the list, and I don't have it in front of me, would be the 300 millimeter uh, DA Star F4 lens. That thing is uh, spectacular. I've taken some of my best uh, wildlife uh, photography with that lens. It's just super sharp all the way through, you know, uh, wide open right there. It's just a great, great lens. It's got the, the silent motor, um, and it can go out, but... Um, Strongly recommend that. Uh, the only reason it's a little farther down than the next one is just because the cost of it, it's uh, up there around $1,000. Excuse me, I'm going to get a drink here. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. So that's why that's a little farther down. And, and uh, it, it weighs a little bit. It's a prime lens, so... It doesn't weigh too much. It doesn't, I mean, nowhere close to that uh, 150 to 450, but it has some weight to it. And, uh, but it is a really nice lens. I, I need to go back and buy that lens. I don't have it anymore. But uh, the reason I don't have it anymore is because I bought um, uh, this next lens. Uh, and that's number three. It's the 55 to 300 PLM lens. 
the reason that this is ranked very high, you might say, oh, it's not super sharp and it's, you know, it's F6.3 at 300 or whatever. But the price of it, the price of it is like ridiculously low. I, I think it's, I think it's 400 bucks new right now. So that's, that's incredible. Just, and um, the, the PLM motor is just so much better than the SDM motor. It's a lot quicker and uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic lens. I enjoy that. You know, I skipped one. I skipped one. <laughs> I need my glasses. It's too dark in here. Okay. So that was number three, but we're going to go back. We're going to go back here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go back and number six, I skipped over it because there's two 35s in a row. Number seven, let me just go quickly go back through what I've gotten so far. Uh, number 10 was the 50 to 135 millimeter F, um, DA star lens, fantastic lens. Number nine was a macro lens, the, the Tammy, the Tamron 90 millimeter macro F 2.8. Number eight was the 24 millimeter F2 FA star lens. Uh, number seven was the uh, 35 millimeter macro limited lens F 2.8. And number six is the one I, I skipped over and um uh, And this lens is better than that 31 millimeter. <laughs> Eddie, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I've had both of them. And you, you probably already know what it is, but I'll put it on the camera here. Boom. The Sigma Art Series 35 millimeter F1.4. This thing is awesome. This is number six. Fantastic. Uh, totally recommend this. It uh, The F1.4 gives you that little extra something. Other than the uh, 31 millimeter, uh, this is one uh, found to be sharper than the 31 millimeter. And uh, the only downside on this, compare the two, is this one is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier. But uh, the build construction on this is very solid. Um, it does this. I guess that's focused by wire. I don't know, but it, it, that I don't really care for that. But it does have a large ring right here, um, focus ring. Um, with f1.4 if you're using this and you know in full sun you'll you'll need to put a, a neutral density filter on there like a, a, a nd2 or something on that because uh, your shutter speed is going to go up to 8,000 like that so uh, let's see here and then that was number six and uh, just again number five was the 43 limited so we're getting there and then I did the uh, number four was the 300 millimeter DA star lens. And now we're all back in alignment here. <laughs> and, uh, and then this one, the 55 to 300 PLM. This thing, the, just the, like I said, the focus motor itself is just like so much better than that SDM. Um, I think they need to retire the SDM motor and just stick with this. I don't know. There's probably some uh, technical stuff in there uh, about that. But I, the, another reason I like this is it's because it's so lightweight. I will forgo like a, a heavier lens that is weather sealed and all that stuff just for a little bit cheaper lens, but still has excellent optics, lightweight. Um, I'm getting older, so uh, I might talk about that in a second. But um, it does stick out. So, it, but it, the four hundred dollar price tag for this is outstanding. So that was number three, um, and I don't have number two in front of me, but it's over there on my pool table. Let me go grab it real quick. Thanks, everybody. Hold on. Uh, Because it's mounted to my K3 Mark III, <laughs> and uh, these these next one two are very similar. And uh, if you don't, if you haven't had this lens, it's it's fantastic, and it's it's worth the money. It's the fifty or the sixteen to fifty, uh, the PLM new PLM DA Star lens f two point eight throughout, Fan, fantastic lens. Uh, the 
just everything about this lens image quality is superb uh total totally better than the, the uh, first version of this lens I, I strongly recommend if you had that first version to get this lens instead just upgrade to it uh, you'll be really happy i know there's it's a hard it's a large price tag that's why i have it at number two instead of number one but Really great lens. I'm really happy with this. Has a little bit of weight to it, but uh, here it is on the K3 Mark III, as you can see there. So it is it's it's rather big, but uh, folk, the zoom ring is really nice. And you can see the focus ring there too. So I think this has come down like 200 bucks recently. So. Uh, you can get your wife to buy it for you for your birthday or something. Hey, Father's Day is coming up. Hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, spend, I think it's like $1,200 now or something like that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Let me let me read a couple of these comments before I get to the last one. Uh, let me put this back on so I don't get all that dust that's already on my sensor on there. Uh, let's see here. Uh Oh, the uh, 70 to 210. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that because there's already so so many uh, 70, I, I don't own that lens, the 70 to two, uh, 210, there's all these uh, all these vintage lenses out there that are already that, uh, you know, that focal length. And I don't, I'm not seeing it. And if I remember right, I, don't know, I can Google it real quick, but. That's not even a star lens, is it? It's just regular, and, it, and the price is like way up there. It's like close to a grand. So that's what kept me away from that lens. Um, I know uh, Bishop did a, a review on it and gave it some stellar stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm just not not feeling it there. I, sh I should pull off some of my. Uh, 70 210 lenses back there all these old school film lenses um and some of those are really good it, it it with the with the old film lenses it's like hit or miss there's some of them that are good and some of them that are bad i mean there's there's some in that uh, 70 200 that are uh f 3.8 throughout and they're uh you know the zoom is contained in the barrel seem like really nice lenses and there's a vivitar that's uh i think f yeah f 3.5 and uh, it's really good as well, but there, it depends on what copy you get of it. So there, I mean, there's all these stellar film lenses that have that focal length. So that's why I can. Eh. Uh, what's killing uh, Pentax is Sam Yang, Tamron, and Sigma dump them out. Did Sam, did Sam Yang drop them? I know uh, Tamron and Sigma did. I'm guessing if it if if uh, Sam Yang did, then then. Uh, Broken on did too because I think they're the same company. All right. Uh, any more questions before I get to number one? Uh, well, let me let me before I get to number one, let me tell you some lenses that I have not tried. Why they're not on the list? You might be wondering. Again, put your top three or whatever in the chat or down below. Um, if you're watching this later in the comments, uh, some that I hadn't tried are that the, the newer 21 millimeter, uh, prime lens. I have not tried that. I have not tried the 150 to 450, um, just because it's so heavy and just a beast. I, I just, I just can't find my way in buying that. What, what I do want from Pentax, I've said this before is a, uh, 400 millimeter prime lens. That's what I'm really looking for. A uh, 400 millimeter, like a f5.6. I would be a buyer in that. Um, I'm going to say this: if if it's a, a DA star with a PLM lens, I'd be a buyer at two grand on that. I I would really buy that. I mean, that might sound stupid to some people, but that's something that I think I'd really uh, splurge for. I love that one. Uh, uh, the Canon has a 400 millimeter, 400 millimeter f5.6 uh, L series lens, and that was my favorite uh, lens on 
the Canon system, just uh, just great. Uh, I hadn't tried the 600 millimeter uh, older lens. I hadn't tried that as well. I hadn't tried the 77, like uh, Eddie was saying. I hadn't tried that. I, I, I don't do too many portraits, so that really doesn't appeal to me. And I've got this, I already have this 90 millimeter uh, macro lens that that is just superb. So that's why I hadn't bought that lens. I did buy the other one. Uh, what's what's the DA one? Is it, I think it's a 75 millimeter. Uh, I just had it for a little while. And uh, I did a horrible video on that. I think I took it down. <laughs> it was all overexposed pictures. And somebody commented like a year ago. I was like, dude, all your pictures in this are overexposed on and i'm like what and i went back and watched the video i was like man that yeah he's right this is horrible i need to buy that lens again just to redo this video what the hell <laughs> anyway that was one of my uh failures but um most of my, most of my videos have uh have sample images at the end some of my older videos and they're they're uh they're not quite as bad as that video so um all right, uh, run through before I get to number one. Uh, can anybody guess what number one is? They probably probably know. Uh, let's see here. Quick walkthrough again. Number 10, the 50 to 35, 135 millimeter DA star lens. Uh, number nine is a Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens, uh, f2.8. Uh, number eight was the 24 millimeter FA star lens, older lens. Got right here. Um, Number seven was a 30 millimeter macro limited lens, the the uh, DA limited lens. Number six was the Sigma 35 millimeter art lens f 1.4, a, a true beast. Uh, if you like prime lenses, I definitely recommend that one. Uh, and uh, and as well as this one, the 43 millimeter limited. Right here, f1.9, right? Yeah. Uh, and then number four was the 300 millimeter DA star lens, f4, fantastic lens for wildlife, which had a little bit further reach, but it's there. Um, number three was the 55 to 300 PLM lens. This outshines. If you have the, an older 55 to 300, you need this one. Totally upgrade. Listen to me, upgrade, get this lens. Fantastic lens. That silent focus motor, if you're using this for wildlife or whatever, it just, just great lens. Super sharp as well. Uh, let's see. Number number two was the newer 16 to 50 millimeter. And again, if you have the older version of this, you, you definitely need to upgrade this. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Albert Siegel did a review of these side by side. So make sure to check out his channel. And yes, Duck Fan is right. Uh, number one, and I don't even have it. <laughs> Why do I not have it? Because I bought this lens and, and sold that off. And and you could buy that, uh, you could buy this number one lens for under five hundred dollars, and, and this is twelve hundred dollars. So you know, and, and the obviously the focal length is different, but yes, it is the twenty to forty limited. And it's not even a constant aperture. It's a 2.8 to f4. Uh, that lens, uh, just the build quality, the, the the cost of it. Like I said earlier, how I did this was uh, IQ, uh, how it performs overall, uh, the, the weight of it, and just the use of it in your hands, and then uh, the cost. So that's why the 24 or 20 to 40 limited is. Uh, Still, I consider the best lens, even though I don't own it anymore because I have this uh, 16 to 50 lens. Uh, so if you don't, if you're looking for something like a kind of around a kit lens, um, definitely I would recommend getting the 20 to 40 limited. It has that old school type feel like some of the Tacumars and it just feels great in your hands and uh, the build construction of it is very, very solid. So. That is my list of the top 10 um, lenses that I would suggest for Pentax. Uh, again, if you don't know, I shoot uh, 
I would call uh, would call it nature photography. So it's landscapes and wildlife, and basically just whatever I come across. If there's a, a mushroom or whatever flower or something like that, I'll shoot that as well. I've got a macro lens with me, so um, nature photography. I just enjoy getting outdoors and and shooting that type of stuff. Uh, let's see. Anybody have any? Uh, any comments or anything about uh, what's going on with Pentax? There's not, hasn't been a lot of news lately, so I'll probably stick on here for another five minutes if anybody has any questions for me. And cheers. I know all these uh, limited lenses come with these um, with these bags. Does anybody actually use these bags? I don't really use them, but it's like, hey, if if you didn't include this, could I say 15 bucks? <laughs> You're waiting. Uh, Kobe's waiting on the 50 to 135. Waiting on it like it's it's coming. I hadn't used it in a couple of years. And, and uh, if you watch my review, there was one side of it that was uh, at F2.8 wasn't quite as sharp. Um, and I find that typical with uh, zooms, uh, very few zooms. Um, it's either one or the other, like uh, like at, at 50 or 135, it's going to be a little less sharp. It's not going to be like horrible or in, unusable or anything like that, but it's just a little less sharp. Um, that's why I, I, I generally, generally uh, try to stay with primes, but if you notice on my list, my top three were zooms, so it's kind of crazy. I used to be all oh, prime, 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 but um, yeah, there's some really, really good zooms out there uh, nowadays. I think the technology has just gotten so much better. Oh, a 50 to one, I hadn't seen that, 50 to 135 PLM, wow, okay. I might be in for that. Oh, oh, you might be waiting for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that PLM motor is just uh, outstanding. If you hadn't used a lens that has PLM, I definitely, definitely recommend it. So um, there's, I think there's only only the two right now, the, the 16, the 50, and the, and the 55, the 300. So um, I'm sure they're going to come out with some more because both those lenses are rated really, really high. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, probably so there, uh, Mr. Frosty. I would, I would think so. Uh. All right. Let's see here. All right, anything else real quick? Uh, it's kind of behind this thing here. You know, I, I did watch uh, Tony and Chelsea just did a, uh, I hadn't watched them in a while, but they did a, a video today and I, I would recommend you watch it. It's got that clickbaity title, but um, find it. But uh, they're just talking about technology and how far it's gone. Uh, I think a lot of us are, uh, you know, been in photography over ten years or whatnot, and and just how much has changed. And uh, you know, the the cell phone technology has gone through the roof, um, and just how people don't understand basic stuff but they're out there shooting like social media stuff and making doing really well at it and uh it, it, it was a very interesting video so I, I suggest you watch that um i think most of um, most of the pentax users hadn't uh just kind of like i hadn't made a pentax video in a couple weeks i think just because uh there hadn't been a lot of news out there and um I guess everybody's just waiting, waiting for 
the next lens or the next camera to come out. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and, and looking back when I made that made my original, like I said, I'll, I'll link it below my original top fifteen lenses. That was three years ago, and and the amount of lenses that Pentax has released, you always think they're real slow to do it. But then when you go back and look at it, it's like, oh man, they they released four or five lenses in three years. So I mean, it's not like they're not producing anything. They're they're doing that, um, and they're working on stuff. So with this PLM motor, I'm wondering, yeah, like like Kobe said, I wonder if they're going to go back and and redo all the the DA Star stuff since they did redo the 50 to uh, the 16 to 50 that would be interesting yeah that 300 if they redid that 300 oh uh prime f f4 ds star if they made that a plm lens ooh that would be great but i'm still waiting on the 400 so anyway we're 35 minutes into it uh so i think i'll I'll call it time on this. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching and all the support. And uh, again, uh, list your top three lenses in the description below, or not the description, the, the comments below, and basically uh, say what type of photography you do. So we'll kind of give some people some heads up on what, if you're doing street or photography and all that stuff. But uh, thanks again. And uh, yeah. Cheers, everybody. Have a good night.